This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, is Bitcoin for right-wing extremists? And I would, ha I would have to say the answer to that is yes. I'm going to link to two articles here about the neo-Nazis, the right, the far right wing, as well as uh, white supremacists and the alt-right. It does appear that Bitcoin is being used by these groups, but it gets actually even worse than that because Bitcoin could also lead to anarchy in our society. It's being actively used by anarchists, but that's not it. It actually is even worse than that. Bitcoin is also able to be used by authoritarians, and a lot of people who think it's just for libertarians may not realize that it's also being used by those who seek to impose their authority on us. In addition, Bitcoin is being used by terrorists worldwide. This is quite clear. I'll link to a couple articles on this. Bitcoin is definitely being used by drug dealers, and it may have even played a part in the opioid crisis, unfortunately. I bet you didn't realize that actually every single bad thing that's happening in the world right now can be directly attributed to Bitcoin. Even car accidents, many car, ac car accidents are probably caused by people who check the price of Bitcoin on their phones while driving, and they may be responsible for these, these car accidents as a result. And this is really the problem with Bitcoin. It's being used by all of these bad people. It's being used by right-wing extremists. It's being used by left-wing extremists. It's being used by conservatives, libertarians, progressives, socialists, communists, anarchists, terrorists, authoritarians. It's even being used by carnivores, vegetarians, vegans, and some normies use it as well. And a lot of weirdos use it, unfortunately. And this, of course, is because Bitcoin is for everyone. It's for my enemies. It's for your enemies. And this is one of the nice things about Bitcoin. Bitcoin does not smear you in the press. It doesn't deplatform you. It doesn't freeze your account. It doesn't seek to silence you. And it also doesn't, it has never accused anyone of wrong think or pre-crime. This is because Bitcoin, of course, is neutral. It's permissionless. And this is one of the amazing things about it that we need to always remind ourselves. You don't need to register in some list to mine Bitcoin. You just plug in with a machine. You don't need to register or sign up. You don't need to have friends in high places in order, in order to be able to use or join the Bitcoin network as a node, as a miner, as a user of the system who's sending or receiving transactions. Bitcoin is definitely for friends and it's for enemies as well. And I have to say, I want my enemies to be able to use Bitcoin and I want your enemies to be able to use Bitcoin as well. Why is this? Well, this is the whole point, and this is something that our culture and our civilization has forgotten. This is the whole point of neutral money. The point of neutral money is it cannot be weaponized by those who are in power or those who are not in power to use it against political or ideological enemies. And this is in stark contrast, of course, to the U.S. dollar, which is constantly being used as a cudgel and as a weapon. And the U.S. has done a very bad job of this, in fact, and has been uh, has been quite a bully. I, I'm going to link to an article here about Russian sanctions and their impact. We know about the sanctions on Iran as well. And this is all well and good if uh, the time comes when the U.S. dollar is being used against people or groups that you may not like. But it's not so fun, and you will be at the receiving end if it ever gets used against you and your family. And this could certainly happen even if you're completely innocent of any crimes. In the future, when we have US dollars, CBDC, central bank digital currencies, uh, also called, called Fed coin, or as I like to call it, spy coin, surveillance coin, when you have these in your Fed wallet and you no longer have a bank account and they get turned off because you're on the wrong uh, political side of things for that season, then you will understand what Bitcoin is and why, why it's so important to have a neutral money. And when the whole world is being uh, controlled and under the, the influence of central bank digital currencies and there's a sort of locked in system, at that point, everyone is gonna realize that having some Bitcoin is not just a luxury, it's actually a necessity. And this is one of the things that's gonna continue to drive adoption and to drive the price to skyrocket because you will be willing to pay any price for a few sats at this point because Bitcoin will be neutral money, remains neutral money. Bitcoin is and will remain freedom money as, as well. I believe that the cultural and social attacks on Bitcoin are going to be brutal. They're gonna come from the, from the left and they're gonna come from the right 
as well. We've just had uh, President Trump was very vocal about talking about how he, how he hated Bitcoin, and he actually asked Mnuchin to go try to, to shut it down. And I would say that Biden uh, is not, uh, certainly the people he hires are not in favor of Bitcoin, either people like Janet Yellen, for example. But I think that this is going to be part of the attack on Bitcoin because it's very difficult to attack the network. It's a very secure, decentralized, uh, very strong network. But you can you can do cultural attacks and social attacks on Bitcoiners. And again, this can come from the left and it can come from the right as well. It can come from anarchists. It can come from authoritarians, these attacks. And you're going to hear stuff like Bitcoiners are rich and did nothing to deserve it. And people will, will fail to remember the sacrifices that people made, the, the, the people who sold their cars, who sold their, their houses, who lived in their cars temporarily while they were stacking sats, uh, the people who, who held, who hodled through terrible, terrible volatility and endured that stress and had their hair turned gray because of it. All of this will be forgotten and people will just look at the log chart of Bitcoin and say it went straight up and it was very easy and these Bitcoiners don't deserve all the money they have now that Bitcoin is is ten million dollars per Bitcoin. There'll be these uh, accusations. Bitcoiners helped to attack and collapse the financial system and profited from it. I think this is true, but only in a very limited sense. It's important to remember that Bitcoin is the life raft on the Titanic. It's not the iceberg that hit the Titanic. Uh, the iceberg is really the, the central bankers. It's the people like Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell and Christine Lagarde and all the people in government as well who think it's okay to live well beyond your means and to spend all this money that we're not bringing in with tax receipts. So Bitcoin is the life raft. It's not what is bringing down the system, but it's what's saving people, not just in first world countries, but also in third world countries. It's saving them from currency devaluation and poverty. Bitcoiners, of course, will be blamed as well when those t periods come when the grocery shelves are empty. Somehow, I'm sure this will be attributed to Bitcoiners as well. And we can, we can already see this in, of course, all the smear articles that I've mentioned in this video, especially at the beginning. Uh, I think we'll hear a lot more about um, sex trafficking as well in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is enslaving your daughters. Here's an article that, that seeks to smear Bitcoin ATMs as if this is some major component in, uh, in sex trafficking, trafficking, which I don't, I don't believe it is. Of course, I'm glad to hear that the government is looking out for our daughters. So in the spirit of that, I'd like to offer them a list that was published in Newsweek a few months ago. Here's a list of people who, who flew on a certain gentleman's airplane. So if they're serious about going after sex trafficking, I suggest they perhaps interview some of the people on this list, spend less time worrying about Bitcoin ATMs, which probably aren't the main driver. I think most of the uh, most of this crime and most of worldwide crime, most drug dealing crime, etc. This is all a product uh, of the U.S. dollar system, and U.S. dollar cash is really the main thing that is being used for this. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.